Hello guys, I'm Rav and welcome to a new video. A few hours ago, Intel announced their new 13th gen Raptor Lake CPUs, as well as one of the Alchemist GPUs. Stick with me to find out everything about the announcement. Timestamps are in the description and on the timeline as well. And leave me a like, a comment or subscribe if you liked the video. Let's start with the GPU, the Intel Arc A770, the first GPU they will release on the American and European market, starting at $330 and releasing on the 12th of October. We don't know about European prices, but I can speculate it to be around 25% more, so around 410 euros. It will be of course ray tracing enabled and Intel will have their own version of a super sampling technology called XESS, much like FSR and DLSS from AMD and Nvidia respectively. Intel showed us basically nothing in regards of benchmarks, specs or performance sadly, but looking at leaks and other articles we know that it will have two variants with 8 and 16GB and the performance may be around an RX 6600 XT. Please also consider that the drivers were in an horrendous state about a month ago, so wait for third part reviews on the subject. And being Intel's first shot at a proper GPU, focus on reading about stability too other than average FPS. Now onto CPUs, we have a lot to talk about. Also thanks to videocards.com for providing us mortals with brief slides. Th thank you. <laughs> I thought I thought. I thought that I thought that the 13th gen was a small refresh like it was the 11th gen when it was announced, but no, it seems like Intel is making some good changes. Not drastic changes, but good nonetheless. Let's start with the price. It will be $320 for the i5 13600K, $410 for the i7 13700K and $590 for the i9 13900K. Of course, they will offer F variants too, aka the same CPUs but without integrated graphics, for $25 less than the regular price. We haven't been informed about the European prices, but based on the AMD price difference for the 7000 gen, I reckon they will be about 25% more, but in euros, of course. We don't know about the release of these CPUs, but allegedly they should hit the shelves in the 20th of October. Moving on cores, they are still keeping the performance plus efficiency core design of cores, and while they are not increasing the number of performance cores, they are doubling the number of efficiency cores. Now both i7s and i5s will have 8 efficiency cores, and the i9s will have 16 efficiency cores. Pretty cool. Now frequency, the 5GHz barriers have now been broken even by the i5 13600K reaching 5.1GHz and it's been pushed all the way to 5.8GHz on the i9 13900K at stock, while the previous 12900K peaked at 5.2GHz. Let's hope people can actually call the CPUs with, um, with a, a normal amount of cooling. Moving on to RAM, like the 12th gen, Intel will support DDR5 as well as DDR4. Well done Intel, just check ROM compatibility when buying a motherboard and you're all set, like last gen. Last, cache. Intel is raising the amount of L3 cache normally by a few megs, but almost doubling the L2 cache of their lineup of processors. I'm not sure what's their plan here, but I'm not really an expert, I must admit, interesting nonetheless. I have omitted a few things for the sake of brevity, there is a lot to talk about. Uh, here's the whole slide, pause if you wanna read it. Now let's move to CPU benchmarks, if you're interested about the test system configuration, here they are, pause if you wanna read them. For more info, head over to this link, it will be in the description too. Also, this is a manufacturer trying to sell us stuff, so cherry pick the results and wait for third party reviews before buying, as always. Let's first compare their flagships, the i9 13900K and the 12900K in a spec int, a standardized benchmark application. About 15% more in single thread performance and about 41% more in multi-threading, supposedly thanks to the doubled efficiency cores. Now let's compare them in gaming benchmarks, keep in mind this is a relative performance graph, the yellow line represents the FPS they got with an i9 12900K, I added the black line to better visualize the 10 and 20% steps. Overall not super impressive, just a regular step up from the previous generation. What's interesting though is that they claim the 13900K will be a lot more power efficient compared to the previous gen, pulling 37% more performance in multi-threading, in this benchmark at least, with the same power consumption, and only 65 watts if you want the same performance as a stock 12900K. This is a wild 
claim, let's see what comes out of it. Moving on AMD versus Intel benchmarks, we see the 12 and the 13900K versus the 5950X and another processor I'm gonna cover for now, I'll explain in a second. I've also added the black lines for clarity. I've done the calculations for you, Intel claims that the 13900K is about 30% faster on average than the 5950X in the games they picked, and this goes without saying, it's pretty cool. But I also want to focus your attention on the processor I covered a second ago, the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, which on average is almost as fast as the 12900K, we already saw this in past reviews, and it's really curious that Intel decided to compare their flagship to the 5950X and not the clearly faster 5800X 3D, dedicating only a small bar to it and not a whole column. Was Intel afraid of being overshadowed by it? Curious, very curious. I've done the calculation here too, roughly, and while it was 30% faster than the 5950X, it's also about just 10% faster than the 5800X 3D. Damn, Intel, that's not really good now, is it? Now, I wanna show you this slide 2 with the 99% result against the 5950X, averaging at about 38% more on the picked games, but it feels weird now that we don't have the 5800X3 in the graph anymore, does it? Well, that was all, if you wanna listen to the whole presentation, I'll leave a re-upload of the live stream in the description, comment, like and subscribe if you want, and I'll see you in the next video.